How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Waffle Rowlett, and welcome back to a brand new video, guys. So let's get started right away with the Pokemon news of the day. You guys know how this works. We're going to be taking a look at the most recent rumors. Starting things off with this post right here. This is from the 21st of March, so not too long ago. Um, I just didn't cover it at the time. I'm a little bit behind uh, with the uh, actual post. But we have a rumor right here, and I thought we'd take a look at it. It includes a picture of um, a character from, I think, Tokyo Ghoul. I think it's uh, Kaneki, I think that's his name. I'm not sure. Either way. Basically, this person just says, it's showtime, Pokemon leaks. And then he goes on and says the following, and it's a pretty decently long post, and I thought it would just be interesting to look at it. So, let's get started. First things first, assisting the Pokemon Company Incorporated with Pokemon trailers, deets we've seen. So, deets just saying details, then moving on and continuing to Pokemon press conference scheduled for late May. Now, this would make sense because they've done this before. And I want to actually find this uh, Pokemon press conference 2018. Some of you may remember this. Some of you may not remember this. But there was a, like you guys can see right there, a Pokemon uh, video game press conference that was had in 2018. And this was in May, okay? This was literally five years ago in May. And this is when they revealed uh, none else than Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, right? You guys can see right here, the 30th of May. This is when it was actually revealed. And by the way, we still had a Pokemon Day celebration this exact same year in 2018. We still had a Pokemon Day celebration, so that still happened. Which means that the possibility of another Pokemon press conference, because they haven't really had a, um, a press conference investors meeting since this moment. And it's been a clear, like, what? Almost five years since then. So it's half a decade, uh, you know, since then. And that's about the right time when they should be doing another, like, you know, press conference for all their investors to tell them about upcoming projects because right now if you really think about upcoming projects for pokemon there are two things we know about pocket pokemon pocket tcg and legend za when they did this press conference they revealed of course uh you know one of the things which was uh pokemon you know coming to the nintendo switch they revealed pokemon quest and they revealed let's go pikachu and let's go eevee right that's which also got shown off we got gameplay and everything but guess what investors don't know anything about legend za they don't know if it's going to be successful they don't know what kind of game it is and investors need to know this to know if their investment is actually worthwhile right is it worth it to keep investing in this project investing in pokemon if there are no big projects coming in the in the you know in the near future so this is genuinely a real thing that can happen okay like may is a very possible time for them to do an investor meeting again even june is fine and also remember that's around the period when we normally would get a e3 but instead what we do get in june or july or may is instead a nintendo direct like that's what they do instead right like we don't actually get the other ones we instead get a um what do you call it? We used to get a uh, a proper like Nintendo Direct instead of a Pokemon like trailer or something like that. Which again, it's not really the same thing, but it's it's better than nothing, right? It's literally better than having nothing at all. So just keep that in mind. It is what it is. But yeah, moving on to that, the rest of the post though, it says there's a usual update: new Pokemon Go season teased for late late June, Masters characters and sleep update. Okay, then. Pokemon TCG Pocket Beta Testing for July. That actually would make sense because that game is coming out this year. Like, remember, Pokemon TCG Pocket is coming out this year. So them doing some testing for it, like a beta test, I guess wouldn't be that crazy to believe uh, for that to be happening in July. Plus also, that game, I think they're hoping that game's going to make a lot of money. Like, they're banking on a lot of money to be made from that game because the only thing they focused on in that trailer for that game was literally the opening packs part of it, which is insane. But yeah, they say here, though, that Pokemon uh, TCG Pocket Beta testing for July, then later full summer launch afterwards, which uh, I've heard is uh, September apparently. So September makes sense. Decent uh, release schedule time for that, I guess. Uh, moving on. Gen 1 and Gen 2, wait, Gen 1 and 2 games for Nintendo Switch Online. Gen 1 scheduled for the first week of June. Gen 2 are coming soon apparently. Okay. That wouldn't be too crazy because remember the actual virtual consoles, if you guys don't remember these, uh, the virtual console uh, Pokemon, like those games... Uh, when those came out, those were also at the tail end of the actual release cycle of Pokemon. So you guys can see right here. So the Virtual Console, of course, you guys know what that is. It's a service for the 3DS, the Wii, and the Wii U that allowed players to, you know, purchase old games. Uh, but basically, if you look down here at the Nintendo 3DS Pokemon games, right, that they did, if you look here at the schedule of it, uh, right, like the original release dates for all of this, like the Red and Blue came out in 2016, right? So this was, you know... A late part of the 3DS era, like really late into the 3DS era was when that came out. Like super late, actually, if you really think about it. It's actually really late, uh, 2016. Because by that point, we were two years off of 
uh, the end of the 3DS, right? Like, which is pretty, pretty, like, close to the end. And Crystal actually came out at the end of the 3DS Pokemon era, because in 2018 is when we got Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, right? So... Literally, we still had those games releasing when the when the 3DS basically ended for more or like more or less, right? So it's not that crazy to assume that they would launch uh, a Gen One and Gen Two virtual console type games on the Nintendo Switch Online at the tail end of the Switch's life cycle, and they could still even port, port that over to the Switch too. But I digress. Let's move on to the next thing, though. So they say here, um, sliding a, a slide announcing Detective Pikachu two. Right, I forgot to mention that, guys. Uh, I think in this actual reveal here, like when they did this reveal. I think this is also in this press conference where they revealed the Detective Pikachu movie. Now, I could be wrong, but I could have sworn this is actually where they revealed it. Like, this literally could be the one where they revealed the actual movie being in, in the works. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, I think they did reveal it here. Again, I could totally be wrong, but I think they did reveal it here too. Um, or like they announced that they were working on a movie or something, right? Like, something along those lines. Uh, but like, this is what I mean. Like, having an actual schedule. Like, they had a whole schedule set out for what their plans were for all these years, right? So they literally announced, like this is literally what they did. They announced, let's go Pikachu and Eevee in 2018, and then they already confirmed a mainline Pokemon RPG for 2019. They already confirmed it, right? Which is crazy. And you guys can see here as we move on, um, you know, 2019 will also have more. So what do we have in 2019 as well? We had Sword and Shield. We had, I think, some spinoff games. And also at that point in 2019, I think we even had like, uh, you know, the early, like, I think Masters EX was about to happen, too, like, around that time frame. 2020 might be Masters EX, but my point is uh, that, like, they were already, you know, a lot of stuff in the works, right? And, like, that's the thing. From an investor's point of view, this is the perfect time to do this, like, you know, actually release stuff like this. Also, Detective Pikachu 2, it would be, it would be kind of surprising if they didn't do it, um, but, yeah, it's, like, Having just an extra one, it's definitely worthwhile for them because it's extra money making another movie. The first Detective Pikachu, let's look up the actual box office. Uh, Detective Pikachu, uh, let's see, uh, box office. I want to see how much money it made because you can kind of determine from that if the movie is, if a second movie is worthwhile making or not. Uh, but if we go here to box office mojo, right? I mean, look up Detective Pikachu too, right? So, uh, domestically in the United States, it made 144 million. Internationally, 289 million, and worldwide, 433 million uh, in in revenue, which is good uh, because the cost of the movie was 150 million dollars. Okay, now you gotta understand with movies, for a movie to make money, it needs to make its budget, that amount of money that it's actually spent on making the movie, like doubled. And then whatever is above that is profit. So if they if they spent 150 million on it, it needed to make 300 million to be considered, uh, you know, breaking even. That it broke even on its its it's in cost and development and everything and actual filming. And then everything that's after that 300 million would be considered actual profit. And guess what? This is actually that this happened. Detective Pikachu actually did that because it made another 133 million in revenue. On top of that, remember there was merch. There was Detective Pikachu merch that probably sold a decent amount. There was Detective Pikachu like you know uh, video games that came out alongside it, which gave a boost to those sales probably as well by a tiny margin. My point is, Detective Pikachu movie was a great thing for them. So. It matches really well when we look over at, like, let's say, Super Mario movie, uh, you know, Super Mario Bros. movie box office. If we look at how much that one did, for example, that one did way more money, okay? Like, that that movie way, way more money. Super Mario Bros. movie 2023, a plumber named Mario, right? That one domestically made $574 million, which makes you realize how powerful Mario is. Um, and on the other hand, internationally, $787 million, so $1.3 billion uh at a budget of a hundred and i think let me see what is actually the budget of this one they don't actually list it interesting um i would assume the budget of this movie wouldn't have been more than a hundred million dollars like i don't expect like a 3d animated movie like this and i think the best way to look at this is like to look at the actual studio that made this which is like i think illumination uh like i think that's the people who make like uh the, the they make a lot of bu a bunch of movies like um like you know animated ones um but i'm a bit curious company information we look up here um well, I don't want to pay memberships, whatever. Basically, my point is that the people that made this movie, right, Illumination, they made they don't spend that much money on their movies. So it wouldn't be surprising if they if they made really good profit on it. So again, a Detective Pikachu 2 movie, I think it was rumored, but also I think it was rumored that it was canceled. Uh, so I don't know if that's still happening, but it could make sense, okay? They say it's a slight announcing Detective Pikachu 2 film in pre-production. Okay, again. 
not that crazy. Not that out of the realm of possibility, right? It does sound pretty solid. Uh, it then says that it ends with a black and, black and white ultimate collection announcement. Oh, geez. This would actually piss off so many people, I think. I think this would piss off so many people. Oh, geez. I don't want to think about this. Okay, so it says it ends with a black and white ultimate collection announcement. Two versions. Pokemon Black Ultimate Collection comes with Black Black 1 and Black 2. White Ultimate Collection. Uh, oh, my God. And White Ultimate co Collection comes with... Uh, let's see. Collection has White 1 and White 2. Visuals are similar to the original games with uh, up upped resolution and smooth out pixels. Okay. Uh, reminds me of Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. Let me see. Let me find those. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. Let's see what those look like. Right. Um, let's see. Here we go. Uh, comparison. Let's see what those look like real quick. So here is uh, Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. So you guys can see this image right here. Let's see if it actually works. If it can give us a proper view. Um, here we go. It's an image that kind of gives you a general idea of what this looks like. So, I mean, not horrible. It is definitely a, like, a, you know, a change. But this is also one of those changes where, like, I kind of, like, personally, I like the one on the right side more. But, like, original fans might like the one on the left more because that's more iconic to them. But, like, this is actually a little bit of a remaster. Like, the actual stuff has been smoothed out a little bit, and it does look like an actual uh, sort of upgrade of sorts, right? Um, and you can see with all these images right here, there's a bunch of these comparisons you can see between the, all the characters. So this is what he's implying here, that we get something like that, and all adjusted to fit a single screen instead of two. So I guess kind of like what BDSP did, right? With the, like, like the, screen, the second screen being kind of, uh, you know, indicated in the bottom, uh, and you can kind of make it pop up and out. Um... He says, Black and White Ultimate Collection, date November 21st. We're still working on the tentative material for about two minutes. Okay, so we're still working on a tentative materials for about a two-minute Pokemon Legends EA trailer to be a separate showcase event in June. Interesting. I wonder if that's something they would actually announce and be like, hey, guys, we got a second trailer coming out. I don't know if they would do that, though, but it would be pretty nice if they did. However, basically what he says next is the following. Now, the trailer starts with hand-drawn blueprints pages that fly away, revealing buildings in construction. Only a few buildings, lots of forests, lakes, and Pokemon roaming around as the camera sweeps. That sounds a bit Pokemon-ish as a reveal. It zooms out to show the entirety of an older wilderness like Lumios, then everything di uh, digitizes into sci-fi blueprints of the city, and this shines bright, disappearing and revealing a more modern city with skyscrapers. Okay. Montage then goes between periods fast from here as music builds up, switching back and forth, showing some cinematics of various Pokemon like Dragalgi swimming in a river and Audino helping a trainer in the city. So, okay, so let me let me break this down. Um, and this is where his post actually ends. I don't think he posted much else. Uh, like, I don't think there's much else posted here. I don't think there really is. Uh, comments too long. Oh yeah, no, there actually is more to this one. So we're gonna we're gonna look up the original post uh, because there might be more there that we should actually take a look at uh, because I don't think the post ends there necessarily. Uh, but yeah, so this one, let's just take a look at the rest of it. Okay, so first of all, um, just the idea of them having ba basically both the past and the future in here kind of already sounds like a good idea to me. Like like we have a little bit of both uh, included. I personally would love that. Again, there's no guarantee for it though. I'm going to be real. Like, there's just no guarantees for it. Uh, it could end up that we just don't get jack shit, but I, I don't know. I want to hope that we're going to actually get good stuff, but I digress. You get what I mean. Like, I, it, it's, you know, there's always a chance that we're not going to get any of this, but it does sound pretty cool to me. So let's see. We're going to find the actual post here real, real quick and see what the rest of the actual post had to say. So we're going to have to go uh, to the bottom here. Okay, so here's the rest of the actual post, right? Uh, so what it says here is the following. Uh, it says... It zooms out, shows past Pokemon building up, switching back and forth, showing some cinematics of previous Pokemon like Dragalgi swimming in the river. Okay, cool. Then it continues on. Stuff like modern trainer battles, the characters sneaking down a dark tunnel, the player aiming and throwing... Okay, so stuff like modern trainer battles, okay? The character sneaking down a dark tunnel, and a player aiming and throwing a Pokeball to catch a Pancham, and another cutscene clip of the player slowly approaching a lake as a large Gyarados emerges from under the water and leaps out as it mega evolves. Ooh, interesting, okay? It builds more until it ends with a sweep of Kalos starters together when uh, who then glow and the music crescendo and all fades to the title 
and 2025. So that would imply then that the starters would be getting some sort of new, some kind of new forms or mega evolutions. Maybe I mean it says starters. It doesn't say the Kalos like starter evolutions, but rather literally the starters. I guess is what we're talking about here. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. But nonetheless, though, it's an interesting rumor. I'm gonna be real. I think this rumor is very intriguing. Uh, a lot about it actually stands out to me. And I guess I guess like the stuff that stands out to me, they're talking about this being a press conference. And maybe this is just from all the videos that I've been talking about it. And bringing it up because I've been mentioning it to an obscene amount, okay? I've been talking about this shit for, to an obscene amount about the fact that we're going to get a Pokemon game that's going to have like, uh, you know, that's going to have a announcement in May during a freaking Pokemon press conference. Because, again, they have done it before. That's my biggest thing right here. This is the proof, the only proof that I need that it still could happen. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, and maybe I'm, I've got a little bit of hopium or copium right here, but what I'm trying to say is that there's always a chance. There's, there's, there's no guarantees that, it, like, you know, it's a 100% it's not going to happen thing. There is always a chance. Like, that's the important part to remember. Always a chance it could happen, and that's where I'm pretty much at right now. I think, like, there's always a chance that this could be real, and so far, it's one of the best posts I've seen. Not too crazy. The idea of an ultimate collection... I'd love to know what you guys think about that. I'm just a little bit scared that people will be like, this is not what we wanted. We wanted a remake or whatever. But then I'm like thinking to myself, well, don't you like black and white? Wouldn't you just want to have black and white again? Like, isn't that what the point is, right? Uh, but I think that's the thing. I don't think people even know what they want. And people are very confused about what they even want from these things. I think they just wanted an actual new game that feels like the old game, right? They wanted black and white, but then it feels and looks like something else, right? Um, kind of like o Oras did in Heart Gold Soul Silver. Because if you really think about it, Oras was just a remake of Ruby and Sapphire, right? With some extra elements, but also things removed. And people loved Oras, and people loved Heart Cold Soul Silver, but people did not like Let's Go Pikachu Eevee that much, and did not like BDSP because, what, the graphics? Is that it? It's just the graphics? Because the gameplay was the same, which then makes you question, did you not like the game for the graphics, or did you not like the game because the gameplay wasn't as fun, but the game was actually true to the old one so it's one of those things where like your nostalgia might blind you a little bit as to what you want so in my opinion ultimate collection doesn't sound that crazy uh i don't like the idea that they would sell them separately uh, it is game freak and pokemon company whatnot they, they want to make more money of course off of us but i don't like the idea of like separating the two but for overall though again I think the description right here, like the actual description of what is supposed to be shown in the trailer for Legends EA, that sounds so much like something Pokemon would do. It sounds very much like a Pokemon, like actual, like, um, like reveal. You know what I mean? Like having like everything, like, you know, a sci-fi blueprint of the city, which we literally had disappear, revealing a modern city with skyscrapers, uh, you know, and then the fact that he starts off saying here that we see an older wilderness like Lumios. Uh, would maybe make me feel like, are we going to travel through time or are we going to be building the city from beginning, right? Are we going to start with wilderness and then we're going to be part of building the city up? Like, that would actually be really cool. Like, a city building experience within Pokemon sounds like pretty epic to me. I'm going to be real. I think that sounds pretty pretty cool, pretty epic, pretty neat, uh, pretty nice, if you ask me. Uh, but again, anything is possible. So, we're going to move on to the next thing, though, that was a rumor for this video, but let's move on to the next thing. It's a really interesting theory. So, this is from Mordecai's, and I've already covered some of Mordecai's stuff here. Like, he made a post previously about, like, uh, his new Le Le Legends EA theory about the Paris Catacombs and how we may have better, they may have, may have better odds to actually show up in PLZA. And during one of his uh, live streams, he actually talks about how Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, uh, they found a Kalos stone over in the Rustboro uh, gym from the Glittering Cave in X and Y. So, like, the stone they found in here was literally from the Glittering Cave over were in in uh, what you might call it, in Kalos. And interestingly enough, Junichi Mizuda has stated that he's in his blog that the Glittering Cave was based on the catacombs of Paris, uh, which made him think about like, ooh, you know, is it possible that this is supposed to be a hint that we might be getting an underground world in this, or like underground city of sorts uh, in Pokemon uh, Legends EA. So he decided to actually look at the Glittering Cave itself and kind of explore it a little bit and, uh, you know, kind of make a theory from that. So he says here, update on my Pokemon Legends EA theory. Now, I finally reached Glittering Cave and found not only green gems that are reminiscent of Zygarde's energy, which of course, yes, if you played uh, X and Y, you, you will have seen these crystals in the Glittering Cave. I actually explored it myself as well. But he says, not only green gems that are reminiscent of Zygarde's Guards energy and area zero crystals, but also little crystal flowers. Yes, these little crystal flowers right there. Uh, where we have seen, where have we seen, of course, he asked, where have we seen crystal flowers before as a tree? Question mark. Area zero. A Z. Area zero. A Z. 
Pokemon Legends Z A. Backwards, A Z. The character of A Z. It's all connected. It all perfectly connects, guys. Like, Area Zero connects perfectly to AZ, which perfectly connects to ZA, which makes me think, how did we not realize we were going to do Kalos? Was it just, like, because they, they were hinting too much? Like, that's what I feel about Black and White 2, like, right, as well, like, them doing a Black and White game. Uh, also, I was like, are they, are they, like, hinting it too much? Like, is this too many hints? That's what it feels like at this point. But I don't know, man. It's an interesting little uh, nitpick. Um, he says, let's not forget about, uh, forget about this tie-in, too. Of course, we have this thing. I think it's Glamora, right? Uh, if you look right here, it looks very much like the Ultimate Weapon, and also looks like the same shape that we see in the like the Time Machine thingy with the AI Sadanturo. It's very much reminiscent, guys. It's very reminiscent. Um, and he says, the Ultimate Weapon crystals, the Time Machine crystals, the crystal flowers in Area Zero, depths below Earth, and the glittering cave, which was themed after the Catacombs of Paris, and a tree that AZ planted in Hoenn 1,000 years ago that had little Glamoras on it that come from Area Zero. Everything matches together it's actually kind of insane if you really think about it like it, it, it all perfectly perfectly matches perfectly ties up and all kind of fits together which is kind of insane um and i don't know man it's pretty incredible and then finally i want to talk about uh two more things we got this post and we got this right here so the first thing i want to bring up is this post right here from light so shout out to light for this one i already talked about this in a previous video but i want to bring it up again so he noticed that if you play pokemon the indigo disc if you go to specifically kieran's room in the game you will find on his wall that he has four pokemon and all of these four Pokemon, he has circled in specific parts of them and kind of highlighted them. Also, these artworks look like really good, like, 3D models, which is really weird. Like, really solid 3D models. So his theory is, are these four Pokemon supposed to be hints for new Mega Evolutions? Now, if you look at the actual Pokemon available here, one of them is Flygon. Flygon was actually confirmed that it was planned to be a Mega Evolution. However, they canceled the Mega Flygon because they literally couldn't come up with a concept or design for it. But it doesn't end there. Dr uh, like, we have um, Malabar, right? We have Hitmonlee. We have Duraldon. We have a lot of Pokemon here that would fit with Megas. Like, these are Pokemon that don't get a lot of attention necessarily, besides maybe, you know, Duraldon or Arcaludon, I guess, in this case, right? Uh, like, these are, of course, Pokemon that don't get, like, insane amount of, you know, attention and stuff. But let's not forget that these are Pokemon that definitely could fit with Megas. Like, they do choose Mega Evolutions a little bit randomly. I mean, if you think about it, you know, what Megas do we have? Mega Houndoom, pretty solid one. Mega Scizor pretty solid one. Uh, Gyarados, sure, that's cool too. Like, these Pokemon right here, Hitmonlee, makes total sense with a Mega. Malmart, sure, dude, makes sense with a Mega. Arcaludon, Duraldon, whichever one you want to choose, I can't really tell which one it is from here, actually. Uh, but basically, also makes, actually, that is a Dural, that's a, a Arcaludon, obviously. Uh, but yeah, it all makes sense. That's pretty much what I've been getting at. It all makes sense. It fits well together. And I want to know what you guys think about this. With these four Pokemon, actually be making sense as megas because they do leave little hints like this little weird hints and it's the fact that like that like kieran specifically highlighted aspects of these pokemon now you might think to yourself oh were these pokemon used by the like the elite four uh bb bb league like is that is this like the pokemon they all used well let's actually take a look at what pokemon all of them use and let's actually coincide it with this uh with this like uh image here so this is the actual bb league this is their teams let's go through so Amaris, no, she doesn't actually use them right here. Uh, Crispin doesn't use them right here. Uh, Drayton, yes, he uses one, two. He uses two of them. Flygon and Arcaludon, and that's it. Next up, Lacey doesn't use any of them. Moving on, Kieran doesn't use any of them, right? None of them actually use these Pokemon besides Drayton. He's the only one who actually uses two of those Pokemon, which is Flygon and Arcaludon. The other two don't really fit, like, they're not really, like, it doesn't, it doesn't actually make sense, they don't fit in with the rest of it, we go back here, we look at the BB League League trainers, right, if you look at their actual teams, uh, so this is when you actually battle them all, you know, regularly, um, let's see, let's go to, I don't know, let's check out, uh, Amaris, I guess, let's check out her, you know, team here, same thing, right, Crispin, nope, none of them, none of them, none of them, and then Drayton has two, which is Arcaludon and, of course, the, uh, you know, Flygon. It's the only ones he has. Like, that's literally the only ones he actually has. Uh, if we look at the actual trainers, uh, now, unfortunately, I can't seem to click their actual names, which is a little annoying, but uh, let's see. I should be able to go from them here. So let's go to each of them individually. Crispin, let's see. All of his teams, all of his possible teams that he could have, uh, nothing. There is nothing. There is no indication of any better uh, Pokemon that he can give you. Nothing. Amaris, 
Uh, same thing here. Nothing, man. Her ace is... No, no, it's nothing. You know what I mean? There's nothing there. So what I'm trying to say is two of these Pokemon don't really fit in with the other two. You could argue that he tried to, like, figure out, but maybe he's heard about a phenomena that takes place in a different region, and now he really wants to go and explore that. And you know what this makes me think about, guys? It makes me think about Mega Evolution and possibly a black and white game. And I'm going to go a little bit on a theory here and a little bit of a tangent, and I want to hear what you guys think about this. Think about this. Mega Evolutions showed up in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, right? We had Mega Evolutions in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which, actually, if you think about it, it didn't really make sense. Like, you know, it didn't really make much sense about the Megas in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. If you really think about it, why were they there? Because if you, if you think about what, like, came before that, it was Z-moves, right? So you would have more expected them to do Z-moves instead of Mega Evolutions in this game. But guess what? All of these Megas, all of these Gen 1 Megas were in... Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which of course was a kind of a remake. It was a different sort of remake, but it was still a remake nonetheless. It makes me wonder, is it possible that if we're getting a Unova remake this year, that we're going to get Megas because Megas are returning in Legend ZA and because they realized that Mega Evolutions as a gimmick is really profitable. Like you can make more merch out of these things like this. I f at least I feel you can make way more Mega, like, you know, like merch than you can do with something like Dynamax forms, which are a little bit harder to make plushies out of, in my opinion. At least that's the way I view it. Like, I think that this is, this again, a bit of a tin tinfoil hat theory of mine, that it's possible that we might get new Mega Evolutions in Legends EA, but also Megas returning and new Mega Evolutions in a black and white remake, which would perfectly do the same thing that we had with X and Y and Oras. Because remember, X and Y... That's the equivalent of Legend ZA. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, that would be equivalent of Unova remakes. Perfectly mirroring kind of how they did it back then. And again, it's a bit of a tinfoil theory. I don't know what to say about it, but I'd love to know you guys' thoughts and opinions on it. It's a little bit of a crazy tangent, but I thought I would actually mention it. But anyway, moving on though, there's a post from Riddler Koo. Now, if you guys do not know Riddler Koo, he's a former uh, Riddler re leaker. He doesn't really leak much anymore. Uh, he has been making a few tweets recently, but I don't really know if people trust him much anymore because he hasn't really had a lot to say. But he posted this picture showing uh, Kieran on the left here with... Um, Hydreigon and it's and Dano, right? Like the pre-evolution here. Um, they, he was showing them two here, and then he was showing how like uh, Dano, like it has its hair like kind of blocking its eyes and it looks very like uh, friendly and nice. But then when you look at Hydreigon, it actually like its hair goes up and is pulled up. But that's not really where it ends. He asks, "Who is he?" Question mark. Now I think what he's uh, like hinting at here, or what he's trying to say here, is that Kieran is related to someone, and who would that someone be? Well. There's only one person, and it is Jetsis. Yes, Jetsis has the same hair. Look at the hair of Jetsis, and look at the hair of Kieran. Also, Kieran's ace is Hydrapple. Hydrapple is literally a Hydra. Hydreigon is also a Hydra, and guess what? Kieran's ace is Hydrapple. Guess whose ace Hydreigon is? It's the ace of Jetsis. So, the tinfoil here, theory here is, or at least, like, the, I guess what he's hinting at here, is, again, Gen 5 stuff, which is a little bit weird. It is a little bit odd. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little bit strange, and I don't know what he's trying to do here, or he's trying to do with this, because, again, this guy used to be the top of the top, uh, top of the top, you know, when it comes to Pokemon leaks and stuff, but lately, there hasn't really been much from him. Um, he just did this, like, tweet as a joke, I guess, but it's, I, again, I don't really take it seriously, and it was just a picture of uh, Lacey and Drayton. Uh, Lacey doing the X for Pokemon X, and him doing, you know, the stretching as a Y, which is ridiculous, in my opinion, but... Again, he's been doing a lot of this stuff lately. And then, of course, this stuff here, where, like, the text on this building uh, was the same as the text uh, from the actual trailer. And basically what the text said, as the guy tells right here, is apparently all five of the buildings here were actually owned and uh, built by a real estate company called Paldea Realty. And that's supposed to be the connection between the building of the city of Lumios and, of course, uh, Paldea. So, again, it's a little bit far-fetched, but, again, he hasn't really been posting much beyond that. He also did have this post right here about, like, uh, a list of, like, Pokemon, like, games, and, of course, their, like, uh, mythical Pokemon. 
and which one showed up which where, and then Victini and Genesect were missing, and then Diancy, Hoopa, and Volcanion are going to be in Ikaku, and Ikaku is the code name for Legends EA, and then TBD, and TBD here for Victini and Genesect, implying that uh, Genesect and Victini could be showing up in some game that's to be decided, which of course could be a Gen 5 remake, but again, I digress, that's pretty much what he had to say. In terms of actual, like, reliability, I don't really know. He needs to give us something concrete. Like, this man really needs to give us something super concrete for people to trust him again. It's just going to be really hard for people to trust this man without him providing some level of, like, proof or some level of, like, actual proper, you know, information that people are going to rely on again. So... I'm going to leave it at that. What do you guys think about this? Is, it, is this him hinting at Gen, Gen 5 still? Unova games for this year still? Is that what's happening here? I don't know. He did say last year, though. He did say, to be fair, he did say that in 2024, we're not going to get anything for almost half the year. Like, the first half of the year was going to be empty. Which, to be fair, he's not wrong. Pokemon right now is kind of in the gutter in terms of actual interest. And again, I'm looking at this from the perspective of a YouTuber. It's not really like a lot of interest in Pokemon right now. It's kind of dwindling. Uh, but of course... Something could happen in six months. Who knows? But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.